As you all know, I am a student in the field of political science. I have my bachelor's and master's degrees in political science. And as a result, I have been trained to assume that people don't make political decisions or vote based on stupidity or based on malice. They vote because as rational actors, they are making a decision that they genuinely believe is in their own best interest, even if I disagree with it, even if it is not in their best interest. So if somebody, for example, votes based on crime, it's not because they're stupid. It's because they have been brainwashed and trained to think that the crime rates are higher than they are, even though they're going down because they watch local news and their perception of reality is skewed by that. And fear is the motivating factor that makes them cast a vote for a tough on crime Republican because they think that's in their best interest. So you can try to rationalize their decisions while not justifying them. But sometimes you can't really apply rationale or logic to things that Americans do. And it creates a bit of cognitive dissonance in people like myself who don't want to believe the worst about the people I share a country with. I don't want to believe that the people at the grocery store and my neighbors have bad political views because they're bad people. I want to ascribe their odious political beliefs to something else and essentially cleanse them of the bad votes that they make or the bad political ideas that they hold. But sometimes you just can't do that. Sometimes you've got to call it like it is. And this poll that came out from the Public Religion Research Institute has brought me to the conclusion that um, maybe some people are just bad. Maybe a large percentage of the American population, they're just bad people. Because I feel like there are some things that you can explain, most things you can explain and chalk it up to propaganda or misinformation or ignorance. But some things are so clear that I don't think that you can really make excuses for it. So this poll from the Public Religion Research Institute surveyed 5,352 U.S. adults between August 16th and September 4th, and they were asked whether or not they support rounding up undocumented immigrants and putting them into militarized camps. That's the wording, and as you can see, 47% of the American population supports that. Let's pause for a moment. 47%. Half the country essentially supports a Gestapo-like police force going door to door, rounding up immigrants and placing them in militarized camps. What's the excuse there? What's the excuse? How do we rationalize this? Even if you think that Republicans are right and Fox News is correct and immigrants are the cause of all of your problems. This is the solution? You think this is a proportional response to immigrants? Sure, you can say that they mistakenly believe that immigrants are responsible for a disproportionate amount of crime, even though statistically immigrants commit far less crime than actual citizens. You can say it's propaganda and they're not as bad as this poll leads us to believe, but I'm sorry. If you believe this, you are a fucked up person. No amount of brainwashing or propaganda can rationalize this, right? If a poll came out that said, hey, do you support 99% Hitler over Kamala Harris? And 48% of Americans said that they support 99% Hitler. How do we rationalize that? Oh, well, Hitler would be better on the economy. Sometimes you just gotta you just gotta call a spade a spade. Half the country is fucked up. They're fucked up in the head. And I can't rationalize this one, folks. Sorry, I can't rationalize it. Now let's get to some specifics here. So when you break it down by party affiliation, 79% of Republicans support this Nazi-like policy. 47% of independents support it. And 22% uh, of Democrats support it. Now, that's a small number, but nearly a quarter of Democrats are A-OK -okay with a Nazi-like policy when it comes to immigration. <laughs> very, very cool. Now, breaking it down by religion and race, 75% of white evangelical Protestants support this Nazi-like policy. I mean, I don't even know why they're Christian when they're completely disregarding what the Bible says about immigrants. It's just ridiculous. 
But there's more. Axios reports, in addition, 51% of those surveyed support building a wall along the U.S. border with Mexico, a 10-point jump since 2016 when the question was first asked. They continue, 52% of respondents said they favor allowing immigrants brought illegally to the U.S. as children to gain legal resident status, a 10-point decrease since the first time PRRI asked the question in 2018. So in short, Americans are just becoming more racist and intolerable of immigrants. And you can try to do the whole rationalization thing. I've done it for years. You can say, look, it's because Republicans are constantly fear-mongering about immigrants. On top of that, Democrats haven't been providing a counter-narrative, and they're now playing along with this idea that immigrants are bad and you have to close down the border and they're championing that Republican border bill. You can say all of that. But this question was worded so bluntly. Do you support rounding up undocumented immigrants and putting them into militarized camps? It doesn't get more clear than that. And even if you're not a student of history and you know nothing about World War II or you don't know about American history and the way that we rounded up Japanese Americans and placed them in internment camps, even if you don't know any of that, for you to support this being done to another human being, there is no rationalization for that. You're just a bad fucking person. We have to be responsible as individuals sometimes and just accept maybe we're just shitty people. If you support this, you're a shitty person. I'm sorry. And listen, let's actually think this through. If you really support this, America, let's think through what this would actually look like in practice because apparently you haven't thought it through. You just thought, fuck them. I don't want them in my country, so fuck them. But let's actually think through what this would look like in actuality. As NBC News reports, this would impact one out of 25 U.S. households that have a family member who is undocumented, and that's 130 million households in total. A large share of them are households with mixed immigration statuses, but we're talking about people who've been here on average for 16 years, and 3.4 million of them have young children. We're talking about people who have been here for a very long time who are deeply entrenched within their communities. Their children go to our schools. So in order to actually pull off a mass deportation plan, you would have to have a Gestapo-like force go door to door. Now, this wouldn't just affect them. It would affect us. A lot of American citizens would get caught up in this, but we'll get to that later. What would it look like just for the people who are the targets here? Well, as Mother Jones reports, armed troops and out-of-state law enforcement would likely blitz into communities, knocking on doors, searching workplaces and homes, and arbitrarily interrogating and arresting suspected undocumented immigrants. The dragnet would almost certainly ensnare U.S. citizens, too. They continue, not only would Trump's plan rip families and communities apart, but it also would have devastating effects for years to come, including on U.S. citizens who perhaps have overlooked how integral undocumented immigrants are to their everyday life. But I mean, that would assume that Americans actually thought through the consequences of a policy that they're supporting. But when it comes to immigrants, they just want them out. They don't care about how it's going to affect them, even though it would affect them dramatically. If Trump were to obtained the infinity gauntlet and he Thanos snapped every single undocumented immigrant out of the country if he got elected on day one, that would have catastrophic consequences for the economy. The thing that Americans claim to care about the most, right? It would disrupt food supply because there's a lot of immigrants who work in agriculture. It would undercut the revenue to state governments and local governments since they pay taxes. It would affect the economy since the entire labor industry would be disrupted, since immigrants do jobs that Americans don't want to do. So it would affect them too. And I think that part of the people who support this know that, but they're still like, yeah, but fuck it, I just want them out. Okay, if you support this, then you reap what you sow, right? It wouldn't impact the Americans who wouldn't be deported the most, but it'd still affect them. But I think they're willing to accept that harm so long as the undesirables are out of the country undesirables according to them because that's where we're at as a country we're just cruel we're demoralized the economy isn't working so we've decided that we're going to blame immigrants because republicans said immigrants are bad and after accepting the premise that immigrants are the cause of all of our problems americans are hot and bothered about the prospect of a gestapo-like force knocking on doors to rip immigrants out of their homes and separate families when they've been here for years and they're basically americans for all intents and purposes Okay. I mean, I don't know how you respond to this. We have 
a proportion of the population that has gone completely fucking nuts since COVID. They're anti-vaccine, didn't even want to wear masks. You have a portion of the population that is voting for somebody who is basically admitting he's a fascist. He's not using the F word, but his own chief of staff, John Kelly, said the man is a fascist. And we all know he's a fascist. He tried to overthrow the last election and is already trying to undermine the current election that he's running in. And half the country is like, yeah, I'll take him. And it's not just something that we're seeing in the United States, to be clear. We're seeing this around the world. Global fascism is on the rise and the fascists are working together. Now, this isn't happening because coincidentally, everybody's like, hey, fascism is cool. This is the inevitable outcome when capitalism begins to break down. This is what happens. It always ends up turning into fascism. And we have a population that's primed and ready for a fascist takeover, not only supporting a fascist, but supporting mass deportations that would be incredibly violent, 47%. And even if Trump loses this election, we have to grapple with the reality that 47% of Americans, quite frankly, are fucked up human beings. They are fucked up people. And I'm tired of making excuses for them. I'm tired of trying to rationalize their dumb fuck beliefs. Take responsibility. If you think that rounding up immigrants and placing them in militarized camps is a-okay, fuck you. I don't want to share a country with you. I'd rather share a country with every single refugee and immigrant in the world than the 2,000 some odd people in the survey who said that rounding up immigrants and putting them in military fucking camps is okay. Fuck these people. And I don't know what to do with this information. Seeing this kind of broke me. It made me feel really depressed and hopeless because if this is how far we fall in, how do we dig ourselves out of this hole? It's only going to get worse. Do you think that the immigrant crisis, globally speaking, is going to slow down? It's going to ramp up thanks to climate change. There are, there are areas in the world that will be uninhabitable. So if it's already this bad, how is it going to be in 100 years?